me 20 bucks. Good evening and welcome to the January 6, 2010 meeting of the Murfreesboro Planning Commission. We have a quorum present, so I'll call the meeting to order. We have uh, three public hearings scheduled this evening, the first of which is a zoning ordinance amendment for Section 2, Section 9, and Section 24, Chart 1 and Chart 4, regarding the post-mortem establishments, planning staff of the City of Murfreesboro's applicant. Ms. Ely, good evening. Good evening, Chairman Lamb and Planning Commission members. Good to see you. The first public hearing tonight is to consider amendments to the city zoning ordinance as regarding post-mortem establishments. In November of this year, the Planning Commission became aware that the city did not have some particular uses in our zoning ordinance, and the Planning Commission directed staff to conduct some research and provide some additional information regarding these certain post-mortem facilities. At the December 16th meeting, the Planning Commission reviewed some draft amendments to our zoning ordinance, and that's what we're having a public hearing on tonight. In your agenda materials is a copy of these draft ordinance amendments. I'd like to go through briefly just each of the amendments, um, just highlight what they're regarding, and if you have any questions about these specifically, uh, you can ask us either before or after the public hearing. But the first amendment is to change Section 2 of the zoning ordinance to add eight new definitions the following are the, are, the use, are the establishments that will be, ha be defined in our zoning ordinance. Cemetery, pet cemetery, crematory, pet crematory, funeral home, pet funeral home, morgue, and taxidermy studio. Currently in our zoning ordinance, we have something called a taxidermist, but we realize that to be more appropriate, you define the establishment or the use, not the person. So we're changing the terminology from taxidermist to taxidermy studio. The next change is to Section 9, our standards for special use permits, and we'll add special use standards for the following uses, crematories, pet crematories, and pet cemeteries, and taxidermy studios. The Murfreesboro Zoning Ordinance already has special use standards for cemeteries, so we won't need to add anything to those. Next, we're going to make some changes to Section 4, which will prohibit cemeteries, pet cemeteries, crematories, pet crematories, pet funeral homes and taxidermy studios as use is permitted in the Gateway Design Overlay District. Chart 1 would be amended to add the following uses and to identify the zoning districts that would permit them. Pet cemeteries, morgues, pet funeral homes, crematories, and pet crematories. We're also changing the term veterinarian's office to veterinarians with a possessive S office to veterinary office. That's just a more appropriate use of the term, so that's just a housekeeping measure. And again, we're changing the term taxidermist to taxidermy studio. Also, the zoning districts in which a taxidermy studio are being amended are changed and are, are only going to be allowed by special use permit in the CH, LI, and HI zones. And our last change is to chart four, required off-street parking and queuing spaces. And we're going to add parking spaces so that, to those new uses which we're including in our zoning ordinance, which I've mentioned before. So we're going to add parking standards for the eight uses which I mentioned, which are crematories, pet, pet, crematory, pet crematory, cemetery, pet cemetery, morgue, funeral home, pet funeral home, taxidermy studio. And we're also going to add some parking standards for animal grooming facility because we lack those veterinary office, veterinary hospital. And chart four already includes some standards for veterinary clinics. So those last items are just more housekeeping measures. The Planning Commission should conduct a public hearing to consider the adoption of these changes. Um, before or after the public hearing, the city's legal staff or planning staff will be able to answer any questions that you may have. We have gone through this extensively and what we're proposing to you we think uh, meets requirements that our zoning ordinance would require. So. Um, if you have any questions either before or after, we'll be glad to answer them. Otherwise, we should conduct a public hearing. Okay. Any comments or questions before we open the public hearing? If not, uh, first of all, I'll go over the rules for the public hearing briefly before we start it. Uh, when we open the public hearing, I'll ask anybody to come forward that would like to speak. Come to the microphone. Please give your name and address. Keep your comments to no more than three minutes, please. Make all your comments and questions to the Planning Commission. If you do have questions, we will make note of those and ask the staff to address those at the end of the public hearing. All that being said, I'll open the public hearing at this time, asking anybody to come forward. Anybody at all? If not, we'll close the public hearing. 
Ms. Ely, I know the staff has put in a lot of work behind this, uh, much more so than what you would think on the surface right there. So I want to thank you for your efforts because this was something that was a void in our ordinance and needs to be uh, addressed. Any comments or questions from members of the Planning Commission? Just echo your comments. Mr. Adelot, do you have any comments, sir? No, sir. If there's no comments from the <coughs> Planning Commission, we're ready for a motion. Mr. Chairman, uh, with the outstanding work of the staff, I recommend approval and adoption. Second. All in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 All opposed? The motion carries. The second public hearing this evening is a zoning request to rezone approximately 0.52 acres located along Medical Center Parkway from planned commercial district to a commercial fringe zoning. Denise O'Connell is the applicant. Ms. Ely. Thank you again. This item is to consider rezoning property located north of Medical Center Parkway, just east of Grantland Drive, and just west of Memorial Boulevard from its current PCD zone, planned commercial district, <coughs> to CF, fringe, commercial fringe district. The property currently has one structure on it, which was a single-family house that was converted into a commercial structure. The properties to the north and west are zoned RS-10 and are developed single-family subdivisions. To the south, the property is zoned HI, which is heavy industrial district, and is location of a new commercial strip center and a Burger King. To the west, contiguous with this property, is a beauty salon. And just next to that is a furniture shop. And then on the corner of the Medical Center Parkway Memorial Boulevard are some office spaces. The, the property, all the properties that are along Medical Center Parkway are currently in the GDO 4 district, which also includes this parcel, this 0.52 acres. The property is currently zoned PCD to allow a, a paintless dent repair business. The PCD zone was granted to this property in 2007. Before that, it was rezoned to PCD in 1998 to allow the Murfreesboro Art and Frame Shop. The property has been vacant for several years and the paintless dent repair business never opened its doors. So although the entitlement was granted, the structure has remained vacant. Staff was approached by Ms. O'Connell and she was requesting to operate a business located on the site. Her business that she's interested in is a, a, what she called a doggy daycare. So this would be a daycare for dogs. That would be something that you would drop your animals off during the day and then pick them up at night. Rather than go through the plan development approach again, the staff recommended that she request a bulk zone that would permit her use because we do, because this property is in the gateway overlay district. So because of that, there are some additional protections that are provided to this property. She, um, therefore, she's coming to you requesting that this property be zoned French commercial district. The CF zone would permit her use and various other commercial uses, but not as many uses as the CH zone would be that's adjacent to the property on the east side or the HI zone, which is adjacent to the property on the south side. The, um, I'm not sure if she's in attendance. Oh, yes, Ms. O'Connell's here if you have any questions for her. But staff will be able to answer any questions you have about the CF zone, either before or after the public hearing. You should conduct a public hearing to consider rezoning this property from PCD to CF, and it will remain in the GDO 4 overlay district. Okay. Any questions from members of the Planning Commission? If not, I'll open the public hearing. I ask anybody to come forward that would like to speak. Nobody? It's a cold night and everybody wants to get home. <laughs> Nobody's coming forward. I'll close the public hearing. Questions or comments? Uh, Mr. Lamb, I think with the, the changing dynamics of the neighborhood, the new uh, Medical Center Parkway, the uh, old Chromalox property being developed, this is compatible with the neighborhood, so I'll move for approval. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. The third and final public hearing this evening is a zoning request to rezone 1.29 acres located along Las Casas Pike and Winlon Drive from RM16 to Commercial Local. Robert D. and Bonnie B. Jones are the applicants. Ms. Ely. Thank you again. The subject area is a double frontage lot with frontage on Las Casas Pike and also on Winlong Drive. The property is approximately 1.29 acres, and currently the Kids Connection Daycare Center is located on the property. The property to the, or the adjacent parcel to the north is zoned CL, local commercial district, and is location of office buildings and of a 
um, landscaping business. To the south, the properties are zoned RM16, which is are for multifamily residential purposes, as well as the properties to the north. The properties to the east are zoned CM and CL, for medical commercial district and local commercial district. The property owner is requesting that you rezone the property from its current RM16 zone, which permits the daycare center by a special use permit, to CL, which would permit the daycare center use by right. Um, the property does have access to Winlon Drive, which is a substandard street, but it also does access Las Casas Pike, which does meet minimum standards. If you have any questions regarding this request, staff will be able to answer them either before or after the public hearing. I did place some photographs of the site in your pamphlets. If you um, wanted to reference those, you could see what the site looks like. The one that shows the building that says Kids Connection Center is the building from Las Casas Pike. And then the ones where you see the gates are from Winland Drive. The Planning Commission should conduct a public hearing. And if you have any questions, I'll be able to answer them either before or after the public hearing. Any questions? Thank you, Ms. Ailey. Seeing no questions, I'll open the public hearing. Ask anybody to come forward that would like to speak either for or against this proposal. Nobody? Seeing nobody come forward, I'll close the public hearing. What are the wishes of this commission? Chairman Lamb. I'll make a motion that we uh, approve the zoning request. Motion is made and seconded. All in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 All opposed. Motion carries. That concludes the public hearing portion of our agenda this evening. We'll move into plats and plans. The first item under plats and plans is the Parkway Office Park, Section 2, Lots 5A and 6, a final plat and a mandatory referral for two lots on 6,100, excuse me, 6.155 acres zoned light industrial and GDO3 located along Williams Drive, Mark Pirtle Gateway, LLC is developer. Ms. Logan, good evening. Good evening. Thank you, Chairman Lamb, members of the Planning Commission. Um, this item before you tonight, you have reviewed this plat previously, but there's been a change um, to the right-of-way to accommodate the change to the entry to the site for lot number 5A. If you'll recall, when the site plan was approved for that lot, um, there were some changes there to try to provide better functionality and access into the site. And as a result of that, um, that we are dedicating some of the existing right-of-way back to the property owners that wasn't needed, and this is a plat and a mandatory referral associated with that approving such change. If you have any questions, I'll be glad to answer them. Otherwise, there's no additional comments from staff. <clears throat> Mr. Aylott, does Mr. Pirtle have adequate sidewalks at this facility? I doubt that they're adequate, <laughs> but it may depend upon how you define adequate. Uh, Actually, he has plentiful sidewalks, and there'll be more to come. Okay. And it, and it will connect him with the Greenway, ultimately, as we projects move forward. Project. Okay. <laughs> we don't need to delay this project, then. <laughs> not, not on account of the sidewalks today. We, we'll keep that. We'll keep a watchful eye on those, though. Okay. Thank you. And I'll Any, have a discussion with him about those sidewalks. Thank you. Please do. Any other comments or questions? If not, we're ready for a motion. Move for approval. Subject staff comment. Chairman. Second the motion. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed. Motion carries. Next item under plats and plans is Puckett Station, Section 1, a resubdivision of lots 54, 55, and 56. Final plat and mandatory referral for two lots on 2.05 acres, zone PRD, located along Pretoria Run. Bucket Station Partnership is the developer. Ms. Logan. Yes, sir. Thank you. This final plat proposes taking lots 54, 55, and 56, eliminating lot 55 and essentially making two lots out of three. It also requires a change to a drainage easement. This is to help a property owner accomplish um, an ability to obtain an accessory structure. It will leave a limited amount of uh, feet for this accessory structure, 17 feet to be exact. 
um, but it will allow for one car garage, which is what they're trying to accomplish. The drainage easement will be moved southward by five feet. The pipe will not be exactly in the middle of the drainage easement with this change. However, the engineering department has reviewed it and feels that there will still be adequate easement to protect our drainage pipe, um, and there will still be a 30-foot drainage easement. It's essentially just moving it southward off the old property line by five feet. Um, and this will require mandatory referral to be approved by you because you're changing the location of an existing platted easement. I'll be glad to answer any questions. Any questions? Mr. Chairman, one quick question. Yes, ma'am. Um, so are, is lot 54, did it originally extend all the way back into the common area, or is that an addition? Uh, yes, ma'am, it did. And the other lots do not? No, ma'am. Okay. So it's really just changing those interior Yes, ma'am. Oh, I'm just moving those interior lot lines mm -hmm. and then moving that easement southward <laughs> by five feet to accommodate for their detached accessory structure. There's no other questions. I'd make a motion for approval. Subject to all staff comments. Second. Motion is made and seconded. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed. Motion carries. That completes the plats and plans portion of the agenda. Gateway design overlay is the next portion. Waterstone Office Park, Lot 7. Initial design review for 37,800 square feet on 2.69 acres. Zone Light Industrial and GDO 3 located along Williams Drive, HPHK LLC is the developer. Ms. Logan. Yes, sir. Thank you. And um, this um, site plan before you tonight is the initial design review for lot seven located along Williams Drive. And this just happens to be north of the area that we just looked at previously for changing the right of way there at the terminus of Williams Drive. This lot um, is next to lot eight, which was recently approved for site planning, I think is either um, undergoing permit or process review or has already obtained a building permit um, and is another development within our our um, gateway area within the Waterstone Office Park. This is a proposed three-story, 37,800 square foot office building, which will have both um, regular office and is also parked to uh, contain medical office, um, and will be um, it's a little bit different, but similar in color and style of and materials than the other buildings um, that are previously approved in this development. Um, the applicants are here tonight, and the engineer will um, be able to present the item before you, and then staff will address any comments that you have um, and respond to their their um, presentation. But I would like to just address a couple of things that were noted in the comments, just so you know that those things have been corrected. Um, there was a couple comments about separation from property lines, both at the rear with the landscaping and the plaza, and then also separation from the building, which would have required variances by both this body and the DRC, um, because of this being in the Gateway um, GDO3 area. And those have been corrected and changed so that variances are no longer needed. So those comments are no longer that, um, pertain to this, um, as well as there's also a um, monitor well on this property that um, monitors this um, island area, and that is going. That's been shown on this site plan, and they're going to install it with a manhole and flush mount it, and adjust the grades to accommodate for that monitor well, and um, that will be addressed on final design review, and they will be working with our city engineering department on that and we'll have more details on that at the final design review and site plan <coughs> approval. So at this time, I'll let Matt Taylor with SEC present the project, and then I'll be available for questions afterwards. Good evening, Chairman Lamb, members of the Planning Commission. Uh, Matt Taylor of SEC representing the project. Uh, I'll try to keep it pretty brief. Um, we are proposing a three-story medical office building. Um, the size has increased by approximately 3,000 square foot since your uh, agenda. And that was due to some uh, requests uh, or requirements by the DRC to uh, add a little bit more relief on the front of the bill on the uh, facades of the building. Uh, so that increased us to 40,527, uh, which is shown on the plans that you have in front of you. Um, along with that, um, one of the main points of our of our site plan. Uh, the location of the building. It was driven uh, by the bridges going across the city's new lake behind us. Um, I think some people have termed it the million dollar view. Uh, it will be a very nice view. 
uh, all glass going through the center of the building to help increase that view shed. Uh, we've tried to create some nice patio areas at the rear of the pro rear of the building uh, to help uh, encourage the employees to use that area. Uh, we provide some covered awnings back there, as well as some open space and tables for their use as well. Um, we've also tried to connect, uh, plan for some future connectivity to the east on the lot six. Uh, we show that connectivity um, adjacent to the uh, Williams Drive, parallel to Williams Drive at that nearest uh, access aisle there. Uh, the building itself, uh, like I said, is three story. It's all brick with EFIS uh, banding and cornice, um, as you can see in the uh, renderings in the front elevation here. Uh, we do have a materials board here tonight if you'd like to look at those color samples uh, along with the glass. Myself, as well as the developers and the rest of the design team are here if you have any questions for us. Concerning the building architecture, um, I think it's important to note that the iteration of the design that you see before you is not the original design of the building. It's gone through several um, modifications, but this um, this design, I think, was um, has been well received so far um, by um, another body, and um, I think is in keeping with the elements of the design that was set forth in the Waterstone Master Plan. May I ask a question? Yes, ma'am. In the uh, two drawings that we have, the one, um, this one, it just may not be finished out on here. Is this white at the back? Is that just a solid? And maybe you won't see that really from the. And I think that's there that they're trying to show where their um, rooftop screening equi or rooftop equipment. equipment screening is going to be located, and we should have more information on that at final design review. I think that's just showing the location of it. I think that um, yeah, from the ground level, you that's won't be yeah. I, yeah. It's similar to some of the other screening materials or screening elements that have been used on other buildings in that area. I also want to add something about that. One thing is that they were a little uncertain to it in some of the earlier reviews was exactly how far in they would be able to set it. It was going to be dependent upon some of their uh, rooftop equipment. Obviously, to them, they want to set it in as close as they can, but they need to make sure it doesn't interfere with the functionality of that equipment. And if it's the, the further in it's inset, the less visible it potentially will be. Well, it's it's really a very very pretty building. Very nice. Fit in very nicely. Mm -hmm. Any other comments or questions? <clears throat> no, we're ready for a motion. Chairman, I move for approval of subject all staff comments. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed. Motion carries. Thank, Thank you, you Ms. Logan. Thank you. One item under new business this evening, that would be amendments to the zoning ordinance and the Murfreesboro City Code to implement subdivision regulations and standard street specifications. <coughs> Mr. Adelot. Yes, sir. Chairman Lamb, members of the Planning Commission, uh, in the middle of last year, and we can say that now because we're now in 2010 to 2009, uh, we uh, adopted new uh, subdivision and regulations and uh, standard street specifications uh, for our community. Uh, they were subject to the legal department uh, finalizing and making some uh, recommendations for amending the city code to get rid of the duplicate and overlap provisions. So uh, we've been really uh, working on that. Uh, as we worked on it, it turned into a little bit bigger job than we expected. So what we have before you tonight are three ordinances. The first of the three is uh, ordinance labeled um, 10-0-blank. 
and that's to amend MERS First City Code Appendix A, which is their zone ordinance, sections 2, 5, 7, 13, 19, 24, and 29, pertain to subdivision regulations and street design specifications. Uh, basically, it provides a, a couple of definitions, uh, adds um, a, a provision of section 5 that deals with zone uh, permits and certificates of occupancies. Uh, it deals with a site plan review, talking about uh, replaces some of the old language that dealt with the old uh, street specifications. Uh, and uh, this ordinance is a little bit different than the other two in that because it is an amendment to the zone ordinance, it does require a public hearing and a recommendation to the city council. Uh, even though it is a relatively minor in its scope, it still requires the same protocols to be observed as any amendment to the zone ordinance, which requires the planning commission to conduct a public hearing. The other two, uh, the first of the two, would be uh, uh, ordinance um, that deals with section 28, uh, streets and sidewalks. And what it does, it replaces some of the existing provisions and um, uh, adds some new ones to be consistent with the new subdivision regulations. The uh, third of the ordinances uh, deals with section 29 that deals with subdivision maps and plats in our city code. And again, it's uh, to um, reconcile the new subdivision regulations and street specifications with the city code. Uh, because we're having a public hearing on the zone ordinance part of it, we feel we'd just like to go ahead and have a public hearing on all three. Uh, I believe that this is a the type of ordinance that the um, development industry, the building community would be more interested in than maybe your uh, uh, standard property owner who may have a, a daytime job in some other field. So this would be something that may be appropriate to have during a daytime public hearing. And I think can quite well be accommodated in room 218. Uh, what we would do in advance of the public hearing, and on short notice, we'll email this out to a lot of the what I call the stakeholders, the uh, people who would be uh, by their uh, professions or their employments affected by these type of ordinances. <clears throat> I'm going to use this word uh, despite the legal department having admonished me to be very careful when I use it. In many respects, in many respects, these are housekeeping uh, amendments. I don't know if Mr. Ives flinched, but they have advised me that we don't want to say housekeeping when really it may be perceived by others to be a little bit broader than that. But uh, I do consider these to be minor. They're necessary so that we can uh, implement our subdivision regulations. We're anxious to do that. Uh, I think we'll be ready for public hearing at our next daytime regular uh, meeting, which would be uh, January the, bear with me, January the 20th. That's enough adequate time to. Yes, sir. We'll, we'll have it in the, the newspaper, and we'll be getting it out uh, uh, later this week because uh, we'll be able to email it. The industry um, works on email today. They don't wait for the uh, U.S. mail anymore. Any other comments or questions? Ms. Daylight, the, the stakeholders, <coughs> as you referred to them, they have had input into this whole process continually. <laughs> This part specifically, no, but they've had extensive uh, input in the subdivision regulations. We've met with them many times, so they've been expecting these uh, amendments. These uh, are really the, the kind of things that, that basically authorize, and, and, and these will not take the place of the subdivision regulations. These would basically have the effect of enabling them. No surprises? I won't be surprised. I'm not surprised, and I don't think they will be. <laughs> yeah, Mr. Chairman, if I might add, uh, the, to the extent there were uh, significant changes in any of our procedures, those were uh, put in during the time whether we prepared the subdivision regulations with a, and street design specifications with substantial input from the development community. Uh, and again, these now, uh, hopefully we've eliminated all the conflicts uh, between what our ordinance says say today and what the the uh, subdivision regulations would provide when they if they were to become effective today uh, and as uh, mr. Adelot said this became a little bit bigger task than we thought it was going to be when we started out and uh, we've moved some things around uh, but uh, again the, ch the changes to the extent there were changes uh, w happened during when we prepared and approved the regulations and this now just gives uh, consistency and conformity to that and, and authorizes uh, uh, to some extent delegates authority uh, to the Planning Commission and even to the staff and the subdivision regulations standpoint so uh, I wouldn't I would not anticipate that there would be uh, a great deal of controversy or discussion about about these 
Thank you, Mr. Ives. Any other comments or questions? January 20th. Move to set a public hearing January 20th. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed. Motion carries. That concludes new business. Uh, next section, other business and staff reports. Mr. Adelaide. Yes, sir. I do have a couple that I want to go over with you. The first is I want to remind you that next Wednesday uh, we will be meeting at the Stones River National Battlefield, those who will be able to attend, for a two-hour tour and presentation from the Battlefield uh, National Park staff. This is a training opportunity. Uh, please uh, keep it on your calendars. This is going to be fun. They have made arrangements for a van to tour us. We're going to have a, a presentation at their visitor center. So. Uh, if you've signed up for it, please uh, be remember. Please remember, 1 o'clock p.m. at the Visitor Center on West College. Uh, if you'll arrive there, they will provide transportation uh, for our tour. Uh, also, uh, Ms. Uh, Jaco has provided to you, uh, under, under my signature, but she did the work, a, uh, a, uh, a list of teleconferences for next year. Uh, in conjunction with the legal department, another training opportunity was set up is the, the uh, training uh, sessions. The, um, it, it was what Mondays with Mendel and whatever his name was, but uh, kind of interesting. I enjoy going over the legal cases. There were actually quite a number of, uh, I think, ten additional cases, but I don't think you will be as interested in uh, municipal employee law as you might be interested in sign regulation. So I, the ones that have a bearing upon your responsibilities as a plan commission, I've signed you up for. If you're able to attend, it will credit towards your uh, <coughs> uh, one hour each session towards your training requirements. Uh, if you don't attend, we'll look for other opportunities for you. So uh, the first one will be next week on the 12th. Um, Ms. Uh, uh, Jaco will again be uh, trying to contact you to make sure for the lunch arrangements. Since you'll be spending your lunch with us, we will provide you a uh, relatively modest box lunch or, or sandwich uh, so that you can have your lunch while we have our training. Um, that's it for now. Uh, are these dates on Mondays, Tuesdays? Uh, I believe they're all on Mondays again. Tuesdays. Well, January is January's Tuesday, and I'm not sure about the others. Well, February's February Tuesday and Tuesday March Tuesday. Also. He may have changed on us, but these are the dates that uh, we got from them this morning. They're all Tuesdays. Okay. Tuesdays. Okay, Mr. Adelot, thanks very much. Uh, some of those topics were very interesting that we set in on last year. They're, they're, they're going to try to revamp the format just a little bit to maybe make it a little bit uh, more interesting. I think they're going to try to get away from some of the case analysis as far and try to concentrate on some of the experts. You may have recalled that there's some discussion in some of the meetings about trying to revamp it for this year. Does it mean they won't have lawyers doing it? I think they will have lawyers, but maybe they'll have experts who actually will make sense. <laughs> I think I'll just let that one go. <laughs> Mr. Adelaide, do you have anything else to say? No, sir, I think I'm done. I think done. I better adjourn us. <laughs> we stand adjourned. <laughs>